This Short Code podcast is a proud member of the MedEd Media Network. Inspiration, information, and guidance on your journey to medical school and beyond at mededmedia.com. Meandering in the margins of medicine, it's the Short Code Podcast. Weird news, fresh views, helpful clues, and interviews. By students, for students. Subscribe to our weekly show at theshortcoat.com. Welcome back to the Short Coat Podcast, a production of the University of Iowa Carver College of Medicine. I'm Dave Etler. On today's show, we're going to try to discuss medical student life hacks. I didn't tell you guys about this because you, you, you already know all these. Because you're using them every day. Are they legal ones? You know what? If they're not legal, I want to hear about it. <laughs> if the police is listening, don't. Just tune out. To help me with that in the studio and live streaming on our Facebook group, the Shortcode Student Lounge are some leading lights of medical education, including Aline Sanduk, Hi. MSTP student. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got Mackenzie Walhoff, an, a rising M4. Hello. We've got Nicole Hines, a rising M2. Hey, y'all. And then joining us from our Northern Virginia Bureau, it's Rising M2, AJ Chowdhury. Yo, yo. Hello. AJ is the host of the Behind the Retractor podcast. AJ, I want to know a little bit about your podcast. Why are you doing it? What are you doing? What, are you, what What's going on? Oh, yeah. So I had a stream of consciousness brainstorming session with the surgery interest group at Iowa. And at one point I was like, you know what? I do the short code a lot. It's a lot of fun. It's the best part of my week. And I'm the editor, so I know a little bit about it. So let's do something with surgery. And then it ended up kind of morphing. And I met M2 or rising M3, Camilo Casera, who also wanted to do a podcast about surgery. Who, by the so, way, has a very nice voice. I don't think I've met her in person, but I, I she has a very nice voice. She does. Yeah. Very, good very podcasting good podcast. Yeah. Blows me out of the water. Makes me jealous. So we combined forces and started reaching out to faculty at the University of Iowa to start with. And going in, it was mostly surgery interest group stuff, getting questions from classmates and asking those questions to faculty and residents. And then over time, I realized this could be more than that. This could be a lot deeper. So I decided I don't really know what I want to do, but I know I want to be a surgeon. So let me start actually figuring out what kind of personality goes into surgery and what they do and what brings them to the OR. What really makes a surgeon tick? I've been interviewing surgeons, not about their specialty specifically, but the overall bigger picture of what they do, like what their path was, why they wanted to be a surgeon, what they do in their free time. And I think that's going to be really helpful for people around the country to hear because not all surgeons are sociopaths (laughs) and that needs to be heard more. (laughs) That's what they say. I I don't know. Yeah. But, but does being a sociopath stop them from being good at their job? The answer is no. Like they're detached and they're, they have to be because they're, you know, imagine if you saw the patient as your mom and you're cutting into your mom, right? <laughs> I guess See, that's so. Why, that's why I should just go into urology and never have to deal with that. <laughs> I'm glad you're doing this. I, I think podcasting is a great way to learn about your world. And I and... couldn't have done it without you, Dave. <clears throat> Aw, shucks. That's nice. Well, it's a great show. I encourage our listeners to go out and, and find AJ's podcast behind their attractor wherever fine podcasts are available is that is that can i say that yeah yeah it's on all major streaming platforms cool i want to talk today about the things that you do to make your lives simpler easier more efficient and manageable while you're in medical school i'm not in medical school but i do hate certain things the the more i hate doing something the more friction there is against doing it so i try to remove other sources of friction i might not be able to unhate the thing that I hate, but if I make it as easy as possible to do, then I might actually do it. This actually works. Uh, My prime example is I clean the shower while I'm taking a shower. Is that serious? That is absolutely serious. I clean, I clean the shower while I'm taking a shower. I don't, I don't clean the shower separate from that or anything like that. That's just when I do it. Is that uncommon? 
<laughs> I don't do that. I don't do that either. I just wait until I'm feeling motivated and then I clean the whole bathroom at the same time. Nicole yeah. cleans the shower while she's taking a shower. Well, I so do that, Dave. I am so proud of you guys. You. See, what I these have. guys, these guys, inefficient. We. How dare you? We are efficient. How dare you be so, so cleanest? I don't know what can you <laughs> call you. Shaming us for the way we clean. Well, no. I mean, let's face it. If I didn't clean the shower this way, the shower wouldn't be clean. So, yeah, you know, and, and in, in, in a way, I am less wonderful than you are. They're good. All right. Good. I'm glad you established Elaine, that. question for you. Yeah. Isn't hygiene a big part of healthcare and medicine? <laughs> <laughs> yes, but there's different ways of going about it. So what I was going to say, what I've seen people do is they'll have a squeegee in their shower and every time they shower, they squeegee the walls, which actually is pretty smart. Then you don't have as much like, like mildew buildup and stuff like right, that and right. soap scum. So taking right. notes. I have a, in my shower, I, not only do I clean my shower while I'm in the shower, but I have my cleaning agents and devices ready in the shower at all times so that when the urge strikes me, I can just reach out and, and grab them. So I have a scrub wand in there and i have my you know scrubbing bubbles and whatever it's it's all in there on a shelf ready for me to go so anyway i don't want to i don't want to get too into too into how to clean your shower so i just <laughs> identified a problem with your all's method <laughs> so many of those products are like pretty noxious mm -hmm. and when you're showering then you're creating steam which is only making it more efficient at poisoning you very much so if it's not also getting on your body and more sensitive area so how do you deal with that if you have not thought of it. No, you just get a bit of a headache. <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, kill some brain cells. No big deal. I, I don't find them annoying. I don't find it annoying. Maybe maybe mm. it is on some molecular level that I'm not that I'm not fully aware of. But Mackenzie, any any thoughts on that? Yeah, I when I clean my bathroom, I clean it with I guess some probably pretty noxious chemicals and then i shut the door and don't go in there for like hours because mm -hmm. the spell bothers me so there's no way i could do that okay yeah i wear a mask when i clean like i wear like a but bandana you, over my nose but if you did it my way oh boy are we getting this we're getting into the weeds we're talking way too much <laughs> if, for way too long about you showering <laughs> if, you do, if you do this my way you might clean more often and thus need to use less harsh chemicals to clean your to clean you can your call shower. this episode the short clean episode <laughs> But you're also, again, you're increasing the efficiency of the chemicals' ability to harm you. And to clean. And to clean. All right, yeah. I just, I really like the ones where you just, like, spray it on anyways, and then you just leave and come back, like, an hour later and just wipe it off. So I feel like as long as you, like, you could just, like, wipe it down when you're in the shower, and yeah. then maybe just, like, the frequency that you would need to actually use, like, the chemicals to, chemicals to clean would be, like, much less. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed, yeah. Well, I guess maybe the point, maybe the, the takeaway of this discussion that we have just had <clears throat> is that these uh, life hacks are highly variable <laughs> and, and highly personal. And we all have very strong opinions. And about we all them. have very strong opinions. And the Dave is slowly dying by like CLR poisoning. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever, whatever, the, whatever people are using to clean these days. Uh, I use, you know what? We don't need to go. No, no, no. no I was going to say, I use the, I, I use the, so I, I have an old shower with tile. And uh, you know the grout lines can can get pretty oh, gross, yeah. right? Yes. And so I, I use the the gel bleach toilet bowl cleaner on the grout lines. I just you know do that. My mom did that growing up. So that's pretty intense stuff, though. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. I'm still here. As far as I know, I'm not any stupider. Stup. <laughs> <laughs> Not any stupider than I was, but I may talk worse. I it's like concerned wait, that we're going to be like, oh, I'm going to mix this one and then mix this one. And sometimes there's like some mustard gas that ends I up in the not, bathroom. I do and... not mix cleaners. Okay, I've done that before. I have done that. We I have done that know. by accident, and it's not good. <laughs> oh, Don't never mix ammonia and bleach. That's Okay, that's a, that's a legit thing we should talk yeah. about on the podcast, because no one ever told me about this until like I started cleaning more intensely like myself, that you can't mix vinegar and bleach you can't mix windex and like you can't mix these chemicals Yeah, you don't want to mix these things you'll you'll create a weapon of war basically that's right when you do that and i think it's written like right on every bottle of bleach though yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. but most like yeah people aren't going to read it yeah people don't read anything it's not common knowledge anyway well uh, as i said what seems to be the case here is that these are highly individual but are there things that you do in your everyday life 
that make it more efficient f- so that you can concentrate on what you're here to do, which is medical school that you can think of. So I do have one. I can chime in immediately about that. I hope you will, because this yeah. is a podcast. So something I've noticed is that as a grown up, I'm constantly doing dishes. Mm. Like I'm always cleaning my kitchen. Another one of my least favorite things. Yeah. And I like... It sounds so stupid to say, but like if you eat three times a day, then you have to clean your kitchen three times a day. And I never had an appreciation for how much work my parents were really doing to like, you know, keep our kitchen clean. So something that really increases my efficiency first thing in the morning is to do all of my dishes at night, like load my dishwasher or wash whatever by hand so that whatever I need first thing in the morning, I don't have to then wash it before I can actually like prepare a meal. And like, I know that seems silly because dishes don't seem like they take a lot of time, but they do. It is time consuming. I have an amazing idea. Put the dishes in the shower. <laughs> With you, I was gonna say that. Yeah, you can. What? You can also clean while you cook. That's that works too. Yeah. No, and I do. I do. I like. I hate doing the dishes after I've spent the time preparing my dish. So as I'm cooking, I'll clean stuff up. But you just remind me of that Seinfeld episode where Kramer cooks dinner for his guests in the sh- like he puts a disposal in the drain of his shower so that he can cook while he's. Sh- <laughs> <laughs> that might be that sounds might be a like little a, that's a deep cut yeah it sounds like a man after my own heart <laughs> i'm down with that <laughs> what do you guys do let's see i think yeah i hate dishes so i think the number one thing is like when buying dishes don't buy anything that can't go in the dishwasher thank you even like my kids like when they were little like the little bibs that they wore we have ones that can go in the dishwasher. Thank you. Mm. You know what? There is nothing. I cannot stand anything more than a cast iron pot. Oh, we really like our cast iron. Yeah, but I make well, my husband clean it because oh, he likes okay. it. He, he so, like spends the whole like 90 minutes seasoning it after using it, like putting it in the oven. So I'm it like, seems whatever. like your actual life hack is to make somebody else do it. Oh, okay. 100%. I was actually going to chime in and talk about my dishes experience. <laughs> <laughs> Which is that. <laughs> So, so that's the less, that's a takeaway for everyone listening is like, get married and then make them do all of your dishes. See, we, yeah. we divided up our, our chores and he, he picked dishes. Mm. So he does them every day. I mean, I still, I still rinse mine and, and put them away. Do you like, occasionally renegotiate? We haven't yet. Okay. Renegotiate the terms of your the marriage terms. contract. <laughs> I mean, like if somebody needs help with something, we can oh, yeah, like, yeah. say, yeah. and there'll be days like I get home early. I'll be like, oh, I'll, I'll help and I'll do the dishes for him. So that I like how you put on. I like that. how you put in this like cute wife smile. I, I like doing it. Like yeah. it, it is. It's it's a nice feeling when he comes home from work. Like if he's had a bad day and he yes. doesn't see a counter full of dishes. Like you wake up in the morning and you don't have a counter full of dishes. Yeah. I have learned to really love online grocery shopping in the past year. <sighs> yeah. Which is. I feel like that's, for me, that's like the top tier life hack. And I know everybody probably got used to it this year, but I'm planning on, you didn't? No. That's amazing. Especially Especially like in the middle of the winter. Huh? It's, it's, there's something about like walking through the aisles and I see what I need and I grab it. Like online, there's too, too many directions I can go with it. You do. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. So. Our grocery store, which shall not be named because while it is a fine grocery store, it is not a sponsor. It it already lists for you when you log in all of your purchases that you have made in the store. So you know stuff you usually get. That is nice. The only problem is, is sometimes you, I have been known on occasion to buy one banana accidentally. (laughs) I did that once. I bought two. (laughs) I was like, what the heck? I wanted two bunches of bananas. My daughter's like, um... (laughs) Dad, <laughs> why are you so selfish? Why? <laughs> why didn't you get any for the rest of us? What's going on? <laughs> My brother-in-law ordered one time and got like ten grapes. <laughs> <laughs> so the place where you actually get to like put the grapes in a bag. He's like, I wonder how many they're gonna get me. <laughs> ten. <laughs> that reminds me of the episode of The Office where Michael goes, "How much could a banana cost? Ten bucks?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Um, I think going along with that, I I have a hard time trying to figure out like new meals. Like I get stuck in a rut of like cooking the same meals over and over. And so I found this new app called it's called Meal Lime, like M E A L I M E. 
and I love it because it it makes a meal plan. You can like go through and click anything that you think sounds good. You can put it on a budget or whatever if you're vegetarian or have other food restrictions. And then you add the meals that you want for the week. And then you like click go. And then it creates a grocery list of including everything that you would need to cook for those meals. And then you can click which ones you already have in the house and get rid of them. And then it also, uh, like if you hit, there's like grocery store things and you hit that and it will auto populate into the grocery list and then it will just take you through each thing one at a time you just click next 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 and it makes your grocery list and helps you check out Dave, as well if you it's keep, amazing if you keep making that face we're gonna meme the shit out of you wow <laughs> mm-hmm. it's, it's like my favorite new thing it's very efficient and then and then i have like a whole week planned for me and i don't have to think about it because we had a meal kit delivery service yeah i've tried that and it was all right except for the last two times the chicken came with like a hole in the thing and so there was chicken goo everywhere gross i know the quality dropped off quickly for me and that's why we stopped i canceled my i canceled it yesterday so yeah because gross i don't need I don't need chicken goo. What, why do, salmon all why do, everywhere. Why do yeah. chickens make goo? No other, you know, like no other meat. N- they don't make goo. It's it's murdering them that makes the goo. Yeah, I, I know, but like no other meat arrives with a thick, gelatinous goo. What is it about chicken that makes the goo? Oh, pork does that too, though. Like you get like pork yeah. chops or something. It's yeah. gooey. Okay. I think it's probably the cut not or the, something. Not I don't the, know. Not the same way as chicken. Oh, yeah, it is. So the the delivery service didn't work for me. And what I realized is that it's good for like dry goods and stuff in the middle of the store. But something I realized is I, I really prefer to pick my own produce because I'm very particular about like how ripe something is and like how ready oh. it is to mm-hmm. be cooked. And something so I've noticed. So then the grocery store delivery thing probably doesn't work that great for you either. No. But again, for like toilet paper or cereal, like stuff that like is uniform. But, you know, if they had... Like, whichever parent predominantly cooked for you growing up, if they had that demographic, I would go with that. My mom always picked just the best fruit, the best, just pro- the so, best everything, honestly. So you could pay, you could pay for a different tier, you know, like you could pay for like, <laughs> like your, your shopper. lower tier would be like, you the, know. The college student. I am, yeah, the college student has zero money. <laughs> and and then, then the next tier would be like Dave. And then, and then, the and then like an ethnic that grandma. Be like oh, so are you saying like who does the shopping? Yeah, there are people like that teenagers' that. first job, college student, <laughs> mom, yeah. grandma. Yeah. I guess you have yeah. mom, dad, grandma. So dad's grandpa. down by the college student. Yeah, yeah. A British trained nanny or au pair yeah. somewhere in there. But there are people that uh, that is their like they offer they're like super shoppers or something, and that is their job to shop for people, and it's mm-hmm. you can pay them to go with your grocery list to the store which i mean paying for services i think is probably another uh useful thing to do if you have this the spare money to do to to do it yeah and i think part of figuring out whether you have the spare money to do it is trying to figure out how much you value your time I, that's exactly yeah. what i was about to, what's yeah. what's more expensive your money or your time mm-hmm. and for a lot of people their time like their time's more valuable they'd rather just give yeah. the money away or like you know spend up money you can always make more Aline, money, this you can't whole make time, more time. I'm just imagining your whole family doing full physical exams in the produce section on fruits. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. Uh, That's who says weird. we don't? To the coconut, <laughs> is this ripe enough? That's a weird thing to imagine. I guess when I like go in the store, like if I get a watermelon, in, I like pick it up and knock on it and yeah. like listen to Elaine it. So I probably look like a crazy for. person. <laughs> or like a peach. Like when I'm looking at the peaches, I need to push on it. It needs to indent. Like. Like we're talking like pitting the, edema one plus is what, I, what it has to be to go know it's a good piece. I start doing is it like Weber? Thank you, Mackenzie. And, which, what's the one where you put it on top? Oh, Weber's test. Yeah. I think it is yeah. Weber's test. Start, All right, guys. I'm not, your that, I'm not that milk. nerdy. I'm not walking in with my really doctor funny. bag. Yeah, but uh, wow. You know, yeah, I had no idea. Oh, but also on that note, though, like Amazon subscribe and save. If you have Amazon Prime and you can do subscribe and save, you can save. And and if you have the Amazon credit cards, the Amazon credit card gives you 5% cash back for any Amazon pur- purchases. Mm-hmm. And if you do subscribe and save, you can get like 15 to 20% off or something what things normally cost. And so like toilet paper, paper right. towels. We know, have done like that. that. We have done that and found ourselves with massive amounts of toilet paper by accident. <laughs> yeah, make, sure, a thing. make sure that it's not accidentally selected when you want to buy things one time. Because sometimes <laughs> right. it's automatically selected. Yeah. And I got like 
120 bottle of fish oil or something like that. <laughs> oh, no. And, and no, like that was the one I was buying. And then like a month later, a new one shows up. It's like, why would it even be on this schedule? <laughs> that like, maybe you own a restaurant. No. Maybe you have a big family, you know, you're going through that. Everybody's on fish oil. <laughs> Who puts fish oil in the food? Oh, I was thinking, I'm sorry, I was thinking <laughs> vegetable oil. I wasn't thinking like pills of fish oil. I totally understand what you're saying now. I still thought we that, really that I was still thinking like sense. a cooking oil. It was still funny. It was we still really need funny. to poll Mackenzie's family. <laughs> oh, yeah, we, I don't cook that much. Let's be honest. McKenzie, Mackenzie's family's like, yeah, um, it's pr- it's pretty good, but tastes like fish. SOS. <laughs> no, I actually like crush up the fish oil and like put it in my food. There you go. <laughs> there are vitamin uh, services that do that. Oh, that's oh man, that's so gross. <laughs> Just the like yeah, fish thought of fish atrocious. oil. The, okay, so fish oil pills can cause like you to burp. And I always call them fish burps. And so there's some that advertise like no fish burps. Yeah, gross. It's like, like no eating after food odor. with it, and so then you're like constantly. So Mackenzie's <laughs> like, this explains a lot about my family. <laughs> <laughs> Listeners, if you ask us a question, it means that I don't have to make something up to talk about on the show. And the show becomes what you want it to be. So send your questions to the shortcoats at gmail.com or leave a message at 347 short CT. We'll talk about it on the show. I like to find ways to do some things when you think about them as opposed to when they're supposed to happen. My favorite thing is sending emails on delay, which is something you can do in Outlook. I don't know if you can do it in, in on the Outlook web access or, or whatever that you guys usually use, but if you have the Outlook client, hmm. the native client on your computer, you can schedule an email for delivery later, which is extremely helpful yeah. when you know that you need to send this out, but you're going to forget. Oh. Or, or also, you when don't you wanna... want to appear as though you're at work when you're really not. <laughs> <laughs> that... Or what I was also thinking is sending an email, but then having it get buried because first thing in the morning, there's a bunch of other stuff that you know, floats on top of it. I was just looking for a widget to do that on my Mac and it, it's not exactly possible. So you need to tell me if everything about how you do this because it's really helpful. Do you, you? Okay. So there's something called Boomerang for Gmail that does this sort of thing. Really? But that might not help you if you're talking about your your Iowa email address. Do you do you use Outlook like the the app or like the actual oh, program? No. I use the mail app. Okay. Which you can if you use it on your computer, you can make rules and like those that come early in the day if you don't want them or you can like filter them into a folder. Sure, yeah, yeah. That, but you have to write the rules and then it only mm-hmm. like works on that computer. My other life hack is when I go on vacation, <laughs> When I go on vacation, I like to put in my outgoing message, given the volume of emails that I receive, it may be best if you resend your email on the day I return. And then I don't go back and look through my email. <laughs> well, you already warned them. That's fair. Yeah. Your ooh <laughs> message. Yes, my ooh message. <laughs> that, I just thought of that. This is, a, this is a way of saying no. What? Basically, this is, a, this is a way of saying no to people by the way, because by the time I returned from my vacation, they probably have figured out the answer to their question because I wasn't there to tell it to them. They probably figured it out for themselves. In other words, no, why don't you go and figure it out? And if they didn't, uh, Deans, if you're listening, you are special. Yeah, not you guys. (laughs) Not you guys. Not you guys, though. Everyone else. Kate, same with you. I have noticed people in their away messages will put, you know, I'll be away for so until so and so day. If I do not respond to you, a reminder email will be appreciated. I thought that was really oh, nice. Oh, that's much more, yeah. That, and that's a, that's that's a, a more nicer way of saying, way of saying, like, saying it, yeah. You know, because nine times out of ten, you're right. People will go back and maybe figure it out themselves, depending on like what or your Or find job somebody is. else to bother, ideally. Mm. Yeah. Have you ever seen that? That just brings to mind the meme that's been going on re- around recently, and it like compares european doctors and american doctors and it's like european doctors or whatever and the auto auto reply it's like i'll be on vacation send me an email in september yeah. and then it's like american doctors is like i'm having kidney surgery in four hours but i'm still i'll, I'll still be re- able to be accessed just to, like text my cell phone or something and you're like oh goodness this is a problem people <laughs> so true. this is a problem you gotta yeah. take breaks for kidney surgery 
<laughs> you know, and that's like a little true, true to reality that I realized there's someone that I just started collaborating with on a project that I emailed like back in December. I think it's okay. To, like this is totally depersonalized, but they wrote me back and said like, Hey, I, I'd love to work on this with you. I'm on medical leave because uh, I'm having brain surgery. So if you could just write me back in like X amount of time, I was like, Hey, don't even, I'm going to go kill myself. Don't even worry yeah. about it. <laughs> I'm so sorry for even asking. Like there's no way I could have known, but like brain surgery, I was like, Hey, take, all the time I'll, I'll email you next year how about that because <laughs> it was something like yeah email me back in two weeks and i was like i'm not gonna do that i'm, I'm gonna set a timer for two months i'll i'll be in touch yeah, yeah. you know later I'll be, this year. I'll be fine until then yeah. <laughs> i also like to i also like to assembly line tasks break them down into smaller chunks and do all of those things that are similar at the same time mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i don't know if that's applicable to med school as much um, it can be like if you're, I'm doing research and working on a couple of projects right now and everything that I can do on like research, I have to log in virtually through all that. I do all those tasks at the same time and yeah. chunk in other things afterwards into like blocks of time. So I know when to shut down one thing and transition to the other. Mm -hmm. The risk in doing this in my environment is I am creatively lazy or I'm actively lazy. I guess is maybe a better way to put it. And what I mean by this is I look for ways to streamline tasks down to their bare essentials so that I can get them fucking done. You know, yeah. where, whereas there are some people who I feel like never really spend any time figuring out the most efficient way of doing things. And whether it means eliminating the, num the number of clicks or the number of movements I have to make or whatever. I mean, yes, you could look at that as lazy, but I look at it as being efficient. Hmm. I actually just had a conversation with someone about this. You are 100% in the right here, Dave. Thank you. Automate as many things as possible. Yeah. I just learned what keyboard my show is and created a macro that, like, if I type in .md or .rx, those will, like, pop up, like, an entire dictionary yes. of, like, medical terms. Yes, this is exactly what I'm talking about. If you can save but keystrokes, yes, you if can you can save time, things. yeah. So there's a, a lot of people in the hospital that have those like smart phrases for Epic. Mm -hmm. And like I when I was a long time ago, when I was on my internal med rotation, I always took note of like what people's smart phrases were. And if they had one that I thought looked good, I was like, hey, can I please have that? Because they were so nice. Like some of them had like they would populate an entire note and like all the, you know, normal findings were good. And then they would just change one or two things. And like it was a huge time saver for yeah. them. So mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I make, and uh, now we have dragon access too. That's changed for med students, yeah. so that saves a lot of time What's as well. Dragon uh, dictation. Oh, dragon dictation. Yeah, it's actually very Im impressively good. Yeah, about yeah, picking up correct words. Even like when I stumble over a medical term, somehow it knows what I'm attempting oh. to say. Okay, <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah, I have uh, templates for like my CBL learning issues. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's good. Smart. The amount of time I spent on CBL started with like four hours. And then by the end of like whenever, I think it's just at the end of M1 year when you have to do your last one, it was like, I can get this done in 15 minutes. Watch me. <laughs> yeah. It's due in, it's due in just 27 minutes. So. All of up to date in. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we could talk about like actual hacks too for like learning med school, like actual med school hacks rather than just living hacks. We could do that. Like, like just in terms of like, you know, you, you're on such lack of sleep. So like just making sure this is a, true you for can, you as a mom, especially. Well, that's yeah. true. That's true. But like, but every med student is sleep deprived. Yeah. Like have a couple extra sets of scrubs more than what you think you might need at home. Cause like you might go a whole week without, you know, washing your clothes. So like having seven sets of scrubs will save lots of time. It also means you get in trouble for uh, leaving the hospital wearing the hospital scrubs you're not supposed to do that well you can't wear the maroon scrubs oh, you can okay. wear the green scrubs oh, okay. as far as i'm aware right. i haven't been yelled at doing that so okay. maroon, funny what are the maroon scrubs? the or scrubs oh, they're, okay. they're washed a little bit differently I see. so they're not supposed to go anywhere but it's funny because sometimes there'll be like a staff that walks out of the hospital or a resident, like a younger looking resident. And then the med students will get some sort of nasty email. will be like, it wasn't even a med student. <laughs> like, quit blaming us. <sighs> but making sure. I also think that like being minimal with the number of things you're taking to clerkships and stuff can be helpful. Like as long as you have your like stethoscope and your pager, you know, find a place that you can always keep those like have a consistent place like in your backpack oh, or something my to keep them. goodness yeah. that is a, a very important <laughs> I think I there, are people, in, there are people in my life who shall rename nameless 
but whose initials are Christine Etler. <laughs> Is that an acronym? You said, you said the quiet Christine part Etler. loud and the loud part quiet, Dave. That's the opposite. Sometimes misplaces things. And my theory is because, I mean, we all do this with our spouses, right? We all have, they all have things that you're like, oh, I wish they would not do these things. Dave, does she listen to the podcast? No. Okay, you're safe. But, but anyway, like just misplaces things constantly. Not in a major way, although I, on occasion I've had to come rescue, you know, if like keys are lost or whatever. But I'm like, just put, you know, like I'm lucky. I am lucky in that I'm a man and then I have pockets always, which is not, you know. Uh, the women don't have pockets often. Yeah. You guys all look like you have pockets today. Congratulations! They've but improved women. They're choice. probably they're probably like microscopic. Yeah, but they're flush. Like if yeah. I try to put something in them, they'd stick out, and I'd look strange. It would look weird. It doesn't bother me. I, I just I, I just, roll with it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's better than losing my keys or my right. phone. Yeah, put it, puts things in the same place every time. Don't don't have more than one pocketbook or bag. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. because then if you do, you got to switch. I mean, come on. You got to streamline your life. So something that's making a real comeback, which is surprising, is fanny packs. Are, <laughs> yeah, I saw a thing about that yesterday. Yeah. I'm not mad at it. I mean, you know, I feel like this ha didn't this happen a couple years ago? Did it like this, this is a, a new little resurgence? Like, Aline's not exactly, you know. I don't know. I saw something on Twitter she's not yesterday. What? She's not exactly on top of, you know, this whole Have you guys seen thing. Alex walk around with his like little like sash thing i have seen that's that. just a fanny his, pack. his european carry-all yeah. it's a fanny pack <laughs> i feel like i saw he a bunch of them but that's perfect yeah they like made a resurgence ago. like a couple years ago and like they never but they never went away like these mm -hmm. things are you know trendy and i thought it would eventually go away because i mean in the 90s they just they looked so dumb and it was it was a dead giveaway that you were a tourist but like now like they actually like adidas came out with a line of fanny packs and i was like i want that i want to spend 30 dollars on that and i'm a little mad about it but those are like it's a nice concept you just you know put it on your waist and if you're wearing like your white coat you could probably just like flip it around so it's not visible yeah nice. you know. when you guys are trying to get shit done do you turn off your phone no oh there's an app that i have it's a uh, i don't turn it off but i block like when i was on step dedicated studying i had it set that it blocked certain apps between eight o'clock in the morning and five o'clock at night and then it gave me a gap from like five to eight where i had it back and then blocked it again from like eight to midnight so i just blocked like i didn't block like my texting or <clears throat> like my phone app so if i still got a text or an important call but i blocked facebook twitter um good one chrome actually yeah so like even my email was locked yeah so i found that that actually made a huge difference and then it also like that app also gives me weekly stats and tells me like how successful i was at staying off of those certain apps and it will tell me how much time i spent on those apps each week you know that on an iphone it will tell you how much screen time you've you've had For somehow like every Same. week it like increases every <laughs> single week I don't, it's like it's now like you were on uh 97 hours last week <laughs> Dude, it tells you that's not even possible, but I'm doing it. New high score. <laughs> yeah, Every exactly. Sunday, yeah. you just get shamed with how much you use your phone <laughs> by your phone. Um, no, but uh, I have also read there have been studies that say even having the phone in your sight or near you can decrease your efficiency in studying or doing tasks. It. Yeah, it, it provokes a little dopamine release, even if there's not a notification like it being nearby. So yeah. sometimes it's something I about like, it, it's like, it's there and so it distracts you. Like, you know it's there. It's occupying some portion of your brain. It's that, a gateway drug, really. Right. Like, if you pick it up, then you're 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 gonna move on to harder drugs like Facebook and Instagram and you know other stuff like that. And TikTok, Just mainline TikTok after a year. Oh, I downloaded TikTok. I had it for five days before deleting the app because one I had like a day off of clerkships or something, Ooh. and like got on TikTok and like blinked and it was like eight hours later and I was still yeah. watching videos and I was like, oh my god, I need to delete this app. Yeah, I never downloaded TikTok for that reason, but. So somehow like people have found a way to upload tiktoks to facebook so like when you go to that video segment or tab of like the facebook app it'll play and like before i know it like it just goes right into the next one and the next one and you're right like this has never happened to me but two like a full hour or two will go by and all i've done is watch these like 10 second videos it's so easy to fall into it yeah yeah that's the real life hack just 
don't have social media. Actually, I tried deleting no. Facebook a week ago, though. You can't really not have Facebook in med school. It's it's I went like nine lot, hours yeah. and I was like, oh shit, Dave probably sent something. <laughs> well, Facebook is where I get all my like event information. Yeah. Like I don't know yeah. where else I'd find out about like you know yeah stuff going on. Where else time. am I going to find out that somebody that I graduated with high school with is like getting engaged and having kids? Like <laughs> yeah. I don't. Know. It's like super important. <laughs> Who am I going to judge late at night when I'm questioning all of my life choices? Yeah, my crazy yeah. like family, like my aunt in law, are posting something nuts so or something, and I can't even like gossip about it yeah. with my husband. How are you going to find out like how uh, how many five G chips are in your vaccine? Oh my goodness, right? <laughs> Or water oh, within the name excessive fluoride. <laughs> you're you're not on Facebook enough. <laughs> Actually, you have been on Facebook more than more than usual because like somehow you're popping up in my news feed quite a bit these days. So. Yeah, I keep getting notifications that, like you're live streaming or doing is something. Is that because I'm more active or because you are lurking on my Facebook? No, we get notifications. All right, you got me. I've been lurking. When you, like, Facebook when you has regularly... realized how much how how important I am to you. Yeah, the algorithm has determined well, yeah, When it. you're regularly interacting with somebody's page, does it like start pushing their posts yes. up more? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna assume that it's because you love me so much. And uh, and I do. And okay. I do. I'm very interested in you and your cats, actually, in particular. <laughs> so I'll keep posting those, and and I'll keep I'll keep lurking. Any other uh, life hacks that you would like to share? I have two actually pretty helpful. Uh, I mean, for me, life changing recommendations for books for productivity. Okay. Cal Newport's Deep Work. Help me figure out how to actually not just like lose any semblance of attention when I want to do something productive. And the premise is basically productivity is a function of the amount of time you spend on it and the intensity of focus that you have on that. So if you give 100% focus, have like no other distractions in the room with you to do something, you can get a lot more done in like a short 25 minute burst. Then if you spent like six hours, brought like like a six pack of like Diet Coke into the library and have your phone and your friends around you, you're going to get a lot less done in that amount of time than if you had like maybe an hour with nothing but the thing you're doing. Isn't like, that kind of also the idea of the Pomodoro method or whatever, yes. where you like push hard yeah. for like 20 minutes and then you take a break for five and then you go again for like another 20 and then you take a break. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's one of the concepts that he talks about. So that's, like, good for the mechanics of, like, how to, like, actually get into the groove of things. The other book that I really, really enjoy, I read this a couple months back, and it changed a lot of things for me with how I go about my day-to-day -day and actually approach, like, anything really now is Atomic Habits. So that book is a very down-to-earth, like, not at all trying to humiliate you into doing things approach to, like, how do you form a habit that is good for you while replacing habits that are not as good for you? And with that, so I read that book in like over winter break in December. And since then, like I haven't missed a single day of working out or practicing or doing my Anki cards. Well, I, I never missed those days, but <laughs> like now, now I don't feel bad about not being productive because, and I think this is a quote from the book, it's a lot easier to fall to your systems that you have in place mm -hmm. than your goals that you strive to rise to systems are important exactly and it's a really good book for helping you figure out your approach to creating those systems in the first place so that like you said dave automate most aspects of your life that you want to automate yeah the thing i've heard about is really similar to that it was diana nielsen who i like i don't know if she still works here but she she used to work here she gave me a book in my second year of med school called zen habits and the whole principle is like, if you can build it into a habit, it will stick, but you have to like kind of incrementally work your way up to it. Cause most people will try to go from like zero to hundred and it's just not sustainable because you have to make too many changes to accommodate that. So it has this like really interesting hack. So for example, if you want to build the habit of going to the gym, like just one time a week, just go to the gym. Don't even go inside, just make it a point to go there. <laughs> And then you go home and then the next time, like once you've made that a habit, the next time you show up with your clothes and if you want, maybe just go inside. And like basically the point is like set the bar so incredibly low that you would feel like really stupid not just doing that very simple thing. And then eventually you build it up to like a full habit. I thought that was pretty clever and that's worked for me. I understand that this is just exactly. an example. <clears throat> 
But I think I'd feel pretty stupid showing up to the gym and not actually using the gym. <laughs> You can pretend like you get a phone call or something and walk away so you feel like it looks less stupid. Dave, you should stop caring about what other people think of you. It's true. Yeah. It is true. That is another life hack. I would think. <laughs> get more done if you don't give a shit about what other people think of you. Also true. Oh. Just thinking about like med school and an early, you know, quote unquote hack is we'll even talk about like preclinical wise, but is like figuring out what time of the day you are the most productive and then making that time of the day the time that you're going to study the thing that's most difficult for you. So like smart. So like for me. And I didn't really figure this out, but like we have a lot of 8 a.m. lectures and I'm not an 8 a.m. learner. 10 o'clock in the morning is typically the time where like my brain is like, yes, let's learn something. And so if I chose it's actually why MOHD four worked out well, because that's 10 o'clock is what time you have those lectures. So like if I chose to do my really tough lectures at that 10 o'clock time, I wouldn't have to go back and re-listen to the lecture later, like a second or a third time before it actually like Sunken, stuck yeah. so it was like way more efficient it was like i could just do it once and it and it stuck but i didn't really figure that out until like my second year yeah i don't like to i don't like to do things early in the morning because i'm kind of the same and by early i mean before you know 3 p.m because <laughs> it just doesn't work all that work out all that well for me and i also like to start my day with something simple hmm. yeah i don't like to jump into complicated things right away because i don't know it's just you, I, I like having some feeling of success <laughs> Mm. to start my day with yeah. rather than you know you just remind me of something it's a podcast that like i think it started off as like how to teach a shy man to talk to women it's called the art of charm but like now it's actually like a really good podcast like all around like leadership and efficiency and things like that so listen like to like to, <laughs> I love, 2010 I love the starting and beyond. premise of that podcast i know that's trash and i hate that <laughs> shit but um uh we, like anyway i Hi there. yeah I wonder how you yeah. found that. Um, I, I don't I'm know. I'm shy and I can't talk to women. My name's Aline. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to shame me about it, but whatever. Um, no, so yeah, they. I think I found it because they had someone on there that I really liked, and I like that. That tuned me into that. And one of the hosts was talking about how like he strives to eliminate as much decision making from his day as possible. Mm-hmm. So his morning routine is like he gets up, he makes coffee, he has a personal trainer, which like not everyone can afford. But like he has like everything 11 a.m. and earlier is already set. It's a routine. He doesn't have to expend any mental energy. Like. He just like gets into a groove and then by 11 o'clock now he can start making like more serious decisions about how he's going to spend his day. But he's built up so much like productivity momentum by 11 that he can really power through whatever he needs to do. And that and that's a big ass like he's a rich guy who lives in L.A. So relax. But and also he's a musician. That's his profession. So, OK, but, you know, it's not like a like it's not an intellectually overly demanding job right you're you're it's a cre- it's creative work i should say wow i've just alienated a lot of people yeah i think yeah mr guitars on the wall is uh not too pleased well with it's all to say that like <laughs> like he doesn't have like a nine to five job is what i'm saying like he he has a lot of control over his schedule and how he spends his day but i i think that was like reserving your mental energy for the most important decisions and not the smaller decision because decision making can be exhausting i think and that's yeah. part of what saps my energy a lot of the time yeah so. i i struggle personally with like little menial tasks mm-hmm. to be honest i don't know why but like oh, yeah. sending emails yeah i hate it i hate Absolutely. sending emails i get like overwhelmed and keep pushing it off here's or the, here's writing the kind tiny of... little pair like writing those stupid three sentences for the mspe like i just kept putting it off because like a little it takes five minutes but it's annoying. Yeah, it's you're talking about the medical student performance evaluation yes, where yes. you have to write three bullet points. Three. That's it. <laughs> three. Still is like, these uh, are two sentences each, total of six sentences. Yeah. For some reason, it felt like that was like Actually, the, the cop alone. between getting into residency or not is how good these two, three, you you're, know, six you're sentences are. You're not alone in, in, in worrying about this, but that's beside the point. So that's, I, uh, that's, 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 an, that's another episode. Yeah. So I, I still haven't figured out, you know, the best way of forcing myself to get those done. I always write them out on like a to-do list that way I can cross them off and feel good about myself. But like getting started with those stupid menial tasks, it always feels mm-hmm. overwhelming. I don't like the email that you have to be careful about 
And so you mm-hmm. end up like what should be like a five minute email ends up being like 45 minutes while you tried to figure out the exact perfect way to say, you know, and, and, and I, I certainly know faculty who have eliminated this from the things that they do is being careful about these emails and they'll just send one word <laughs> replies and you're like, okay, well, I have no idea how I should, th- what I should do, but. Well, like that's a form of privilege, right? Like you're not going to fire them if you get offended. So like they can afford literally. They it's can not offense so much as it is ambiguity. Like you send them, you send them a list of things that for instance, like you could do in response to their request and they reply with yes. And you're like, Except yeah, for my iPhone. Which one? Because ultimately, yeah. their time is more expensive than yours, so they're buying their own time and wasting more yeah. of yours a little bit. Yeah. Right. I need. I had one piece of advice. Uh, you, I don't know. That's a hack. I know. Yeah. I haven't. I haven't. I feel like I'm not a kind of person that has a lot of life hacks that would be helpful. You for are really clever, people, though. Like you're, really, you're really modest, but you've got some great. So, hacks. this is just more a piece of advice, like for people listening to like any. St- study tips or like ways to improve like if you've made it to medical school and you're not in the position where like your performance is not cutting it and you're failing like you're in trouble academically don't judge yourself based on how other people study like oh yeah i i struggled with this at first like oh i should be doing anki i should be doing this i should Mm -hmm. be doing that like Find what works for you and don't worry about what works for other people. That's not to say don't try things out. And it, right. It, like yeah. if you are not meeting your goals, like if, if you feel that you want to improve, absolutely, by all means. But like don't create unnecessary stress for yourself when you're already in an okay position and there's nothing wrong with whatever techniques you're using. Yeah. That's just great advice for life in general is that like... Everyone is different. Everyone's approach is different. And comparing yourself to other people, it's its not a one-to-one comparison. And it's so easy to do, but it's fruitless and it just tears you down. So if it ain't mm-hmm. broke, don't fix it. Yeah. I need to, to uh, break for our sponsor this week, Panacea Financial. Panacea Financial is a company founded by two doctors that were frustrated as medical trainees that banks didn't seem to understand the unique needs of doctors those in the medical field so they weren't uh passive they decided to build a company just for medical students and doctors with nationwide digital banking panacea financial provides medical students with free checking that includes no atm fees nationwide high yield savings accounts a free personal banker around the clock customer support and with loans designed with you in mind no one should borrow more than they need but with panacea financial fourth year medical students can get money as needed in as little as 24 hours with their prn personal loan it has an interest rate half of a usual credit card no co-signer is required and it's a fully digital application instead of running up credit card debt try their prn personal loan is designed to give you a better way to cover expenses such as residency applications and relocation or board exams some customers actually use it to pay off toxic credit card debt in addition medical students can have a period of no or reduced payments on their PRN personal loan. So join the growing number of medical students and physicians nationwide that expect more from their bank. Go to panaceafinancial.com to open your free account. Panacea Financial is a division of Premise, member FDIC. Let's play a game. Here's what I did. I put famous doctor's images repeatedly through an AI caricature maker. Oh, geez. Oh boy. And yeah, I, I did this until the app couldn't detect a face anymore. <laughs> <laughs> this is an audio podcast. So I don't know how entertaining this is for our <laughs> audio they listeners. They can't see this. However, no. however, I have posted these on our Instagram so that you can check them out. Then you know, I You know what this reminds me of? My passport photo. (laughs) I swear to God, I don't know how I was allowed to cross borders so many times with this, like, what looked like someone took my picture and then gave it to a small child to reproduce and then faxed it 20 times before actually putting it in my passport. And thank God, I just, I'm about to renew my passport, but like, I never understood how people, I was like, is that what you think I look like? Because that kind of hurts my feelings. (laughs) Yeah, like that. Yeah. (laughs) Whatever that is. 
Are you just me or I, I, I feel like same. I, my passport looks like a deep fried version of me with a beard. Yeah. yeah. Mine is great. I'm oh. not looking forward to getting a new one with ch- name change. Right, quit bragging, Nicole. I think yeah. my re- most recent one was when I was like 11. So it's, <laughs> it's real funny. I mean, it's not current anymore. So I assembled those images in reverse order into these videos from craziest to normal. I'll play those videos and we'll see who among you can recognize them first. Can we I give do. a first crack right now? Yeah, so this is a, this is, we'll call this practice, this one. Are, and are they all deceased? No, these are all, these are all, first of all, these are all physicians that you should know. Famous, famous, famous physicians that you probably know. Are they, are they physicians I'm, here? Uh, well, <laughs> this. Before I start guessing I, I, physicians I, here. No, uh, no, they aren't, uh, by and large. Before I like see one, I'm like, it's Chris Cooper. <laughs> and then he hears that and is very offended or something. So this Kick is. Kick her out. <laughs> this is the demo. We'll get some practice. Okay. See if you can recognize this. Would you like to take a shot at it now? My first thought, for some reason, was Jennifer Dudna. Okay. The person who discovered CRISPR. So. Okay. Well, okay. I I wasn't. Can these also be fictional doctors? Yes, some of them are. Oh, like TV doctors? Oh, okay. Okay. All right. This might be more fun then. All right. So here we go. Whoever can come up with the answer first, just shout it out. No idea. This person looks extremely insane. We'll slowly get more. It's like the progression of Picasso Mm -hmm. backwards. Blonde Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Oh, this is a man or a it, the, woman? It, it's a guy. It's starting to look more like a man than it did at the beginning. It's getting closer. See, I feel like it's just going to be someone I don't know. It is Chris yeah. Cooper. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> The hair is so long compared to See, I gotta yeah, admit, this was yeah. my that was my first thought when this pops up was Chris Cooper. Yeah. I started, I started thinking it later and I was like, is it really? You gotta be brave if you want to get that first thing in. All right, so that was the demo. We'll switch to the next one. Uh, oh, I got no. it. Easy. Yeah. Easy. Oh, really? That's house. This, is, this has to be house. Yes. House, yeah. Yeah, well, well, okay. That one That one was easy. It, that it, looks worse. This one, for some reason, only allowed me to put in, like, I don't know, four photos before it was like, well, that's not a face anymore. <laughs> Yeah. 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 I thought it looked a lot like, like Ted Danson. David Spade or somebody from. <laughs> he looks wow, really man. young here in this picture, though. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was a while ago. All right. So that was that, was that one. Oop. Let's try this next one. Fauci. Guys, yeah. <laughs> you did, damn it. <laughs> Fauci also apparently is already somewhat unrecognizable to. <laughs> Two AIs. <laughs> oh, that's fun. He looks nice there, though. Huh? You should have done that. Does he you... look nice? He looks like it's somebody's nice grandpa. Have you seen the Disney or the Pixar app that a bunch of people have been putting their faces into? Yeah, yeah that's this is this. actually really this is that app. Oh, it is. Okay, I've never actually. It's I not a Pixar app, or maybe there is a Pixar app, but this is um the app that does that. This though. is an app that does that. You can also do cartoons, but I didn't. I didn't use. Was that. it made by Russians? Just out of curiosity. Oh, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool. Yeah. I, I would never ask you to download this app. <laughs> <laughs> the Russians already have all my information. So. Yeah, Whenever Google asks for my address, I'm like, come on. Yeah. You and I both know. You know. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Let's see if you get this one. Jeez. Looks like all he's got a monocle. Eyes. I don't remember who Francis this is. Francis Collins. <laughs> like the smile is... It's Sherlock huge. Holmes. Just amazing. Dr. Watson. Dr. Watson. No. I can't remember who this is. is oh, Dr. Pete Rubenstein. Oh, no. Dr. Phil? <laughs> no, yeah. I mean. Yes, it's Dr. Oh. Phil. Oh. Oh, he's, oh, he's barely a doctor. He's he's yeah. doctor, he's quote unquote, doctor. unquote, Phil. Is he a, I think he's a psychologist. He's a psychologist. Yeah. He's a marriage counselor, like, yeah. originally. I'm Dr. Phil. That's crazy. <laughs> so, did you just like pro- like take the, uh, the picture progressively? Yes. Like yes. Okay. Interesting. Every result was fed back in. That's really funny. How long did this take you? I look. Let's not. <laughs> he said he worked really hard on this. Let's not talk us. about it. 
Let's just say I had to scramble and do a few things before I went you home. You just yesterday. sitting here like by yourself giggling to yourself as you kept putting these back through. I've been using this app for like a week. <laughs> so, all right, let's do the next one. Ooh, goodness, this is interesting. It looks like an alien. Hmm. Why are her eyes? Oh, it's got a, it's her eyeliner or something. It's making it weird. I have no idea. I think you're going to be surprised. I'm really embarrassed that I don't know more First. famous female oh, she's not. Oh, I thought those were her teeth. It was just that her lips are have like a little, a little bit of a, a little shimmer. highlight on them. Yeah. Oh, Dr. Oz. Yes. <laughs> it was not a female. What? Oh, okay. Yes. Oh. Dr. Mehmet Oz. It's so, wow. Another one of, doctor. One of the things that really confuses me with caricatures and this progressive thing is it is lengthening the hair. Yes. Yeah. And the lips the color it, it turns, looks like there's lipstick it sometimes. turns it turns a lot of people into women well and this is very blonde yeah. and his hair is like dark brown yeah. it, it really exaggerates the eye like every feature every, just gets yes. eyebrows mm -hmm. yeah the nose is kind of gone yeah well, which like to be honest that's the 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 features of caricatures right they exaggerate yes. your, your yeah. features and yeah that was redundant but yeah all right uh let's try the next one <laughs> Oh boy! Again, glasses or crazy eyeliner or, or eyes in general, or just Stan oh, Stan well, Perlman? No, I have no idea. This one, this was one that the algorithm took a long time before it decided that it didn't know. All right, now it looks this one like is David a woman. Spade. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think this one actually is. I don't know what's going oh. on with the chin. Oh, is that a beard? No. Her hand. Oh, is that was oh, that the I the doctor from this. the Trump administration? Oh. Yes, Deborah Burks. Mm. Oh. Uh, I don't know her. Oddly, if you play it from not weird to weird, you get a real time view of her reaction to Donald Trump during that news conference that this was taken from. Right, and then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute. <laughs> in a minute. And is there a way we can do something like that uh, by? injection you should or, you have to post the actual <laughs> clip because that's the only way it's going to make sense <laughs> and they are indistinguishable yeah oh, oh boy. boy remember those days guys oh uh, god try not to it's been great dave is this what you're referring to with bleach in the shower <laughs> it's pure i i have had no coronavirus since I started cleaning my shower while I was in it. I've had no bacterial growth of any kind no. in my body. I my have microbiome no, is no gone. interior microbes <laughs> at all. I shit Be myself <laughs> every day. <laughs> oh, all right, let's try this one. Hmm. That didn't get any better. <laughs> it got, got closer. It did. It got closer. It's, it's like threatening you. Now it got farther away. <laughs> oh, I think this one took a while too for some reason. This is a classic Picasso painting. <laughs> my answer. What's going on with her eye? I'm guessing this is an actress. Mayim Bialik? No. The neuroscientist? No. Okay, I'm whatever. Good, good guess though. I didn't think. Yeah. Yeah, Blossom. Sancho. Oh. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yes. Doctor uh, Doctor Yang, I think. Yeah, oh, Christina Yang. Yang. Yes. I I've been waiting. I was like, where's Meredith? I know. I was wondering over? here. Yeah. Wow. That was the last one. That was fun. I like this. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, go check those out on our Instagram. You can have fun playing along. Or what's this actually, one? Actually, it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this freak. It's horrifying. <laughs> oh it's my god. <laughs> it's like histology all over again. <laughs> That's our show. AJ, Aline, Nicole, Mackenzie, thanks for being on the show with me today. Thanks, thanks for suffering thanks. me one more time. And what kind of fistula would I be if I didn't thank you, Shortcoats, for making us a part of your week? If you're new here and you like what you heard today, follow the show wherever fine podcasts are available. Our editors are AJ Chowdhury and Eric Bozard, and Alex Belzer is our marketing coordinator. The show is made possible by a generous donation by Carver College of Medicine, Student Government, and ongoing support from the Writing and Humanities program. Our music is by Dr. Vox and Catmosphere. Talk to you in one week. Hi, short coats. Look, life and medical education 
Life in America, life in the world is often difficult. And I often wish I could help. All I have is this podcast, but in my wildest dreams, you have the support you need to lead a life of your choosing. You deserve to be happy, healthy, and successful in whatever ways you define those words. So if you need support because you've experienced racism, discrimination, harassment, mental health crises, I want you to be able to get the help that you need. And so I'm going to put some links in the show notes to some resources that you can use. But the bottom line is that for what it's worth, I see you. I know you're out there. I wish I could do more. Maybe I can in ways that I don't understand yet or know about. But I see you and I'm glad you're here and other people are too. 